the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, this is an interesting one, right? Brent Venables comes in as the head coach. Lincoln Riley leaves. They did not make the Big 12 title game last year for the first time in forever. They had won so many conference titles. I mean, it was just ridiculous. The offense was a bit of a a downer last year. Uh, everybody assumed that Spencer Rattler was the heir apparent to all of those uh, Heisman contenders for years and years, and he just was not. Uh, they were they were pretty good in 2020, and then in 2021, you know, you remember they whipped Florida, and it obviously it was not the same Florida team that you saw in the regular season, but they destroyed them in the bowl game at the end of 2020. 2021, they come in, and they have all the hype in the world, and everything's great. This year, 57% returning production after an 11-2 and season. They won the bowl game, by the way. Bob Stoops coming out of retirement to coach was interesting, to say the least. Uh, but it, their offense only returns 46% of their production. You know, they've got new offense coordinator Jeff Levy from Ole Miss. I, they were still, like, the numbers were still good. And it just kind of goes to show that Lincoln Riley's offense is, even when you can tell that something is off, they're still going to put up numbers, and they're still going to be efficient. They were number 14 in PPA per drive. That's predicted points added per drive. Uh, rushing success rate was number 28. Passing success rate was number 15, even though they had to swap from Spencer Rattler over to Caleb Williams in the middle of the year. You know, projected SP Plus record this year is 10-2. and two. Their postgame win expectancy. This is a bit of a cause for concern for me. Yes, they went 11-2 and two last year. They went 10-2 and two in the regular season. 7.47 and 4.53. So they were closer to like a 7-5 and five or an 8-4 and four team than they were a 10-2 and two team. And that's interesting. You remember all those close games early. One score win over Nebraska. One score win over uh, West Virginia. One score win over Iowa State, etc. Uh, let's move to the offense for this season. Again, Jeff Lebby is the new offensive coordinator. Came over from Ole Miss. He was Lane Kiffin's, uh, uh, excuse me, O.C., at Ole Miss, he was, uh, I just went blank on the name, um, Josh Heupel's offensive coordinator when he was at UCF. Dylan Gabriel, the former UCF starter, is going to be the guy here. And there's not a lot behind him, so you got to hope that he stays healthy. He was out injured for the majority of last season. He started off well with Gus Malzahn, and then, of course, Mikey Keene took over the role and who knows who's going to be the quarterback of UCF. We're not going to worry about that. There's really no sense in looking at prior numbers for this offense because it's going to be completely different than, than what they ran last year. The offensive line coach, Bedenbaugh, stayed in Norman, so that's good that he can work with the left tackle, Harrison. Uh, let me go and pull this up on the screen so you guys can see. Uh, they got two other starters. They got wide receiver Marvin Mims, running back Eric Gray. Those guys are playmakers. They are going to be good. They are going to get a lot of usage, just a ton of usage. I, I I wonder about this. Like, what are the growing pains on offense to move between Lincoln Riley's offense and Jeff Levy's offense? They are they are not as similar as you would think, right? Both of them do like to run quite a bit, but there are some distinct differences between these two offenses that I'm curious to see if the guys that are left over, especially on the offensive line, are going to be able to catch up just as quick. Right, that's that's what I want to know. As far as the defense, Brent Venables is a defensive wizard. <laughs> what I really want to see is what is he going to be like on the sideline? Is he just going to let Lebby run the offense and then he just runs the defense kind of like he did at Clemson? Or is he going to be involved in everything? Is he going to be insanely animated? Is he going to have his guy like holding the back of his belt loop? That's I'm curious about all this. Uh, the defensive tackles, Jalen Redmond and Jeffrey Johnson. Uh, Jeffrey Johnson from Tulane, who's a, a transfer that came in. Those are some of the guys that I want to watch here. Uh, other guys I want to see, I mean, the linebacker, Deshaun White, for sure. Uh, this is, I mean, defense is a uh, venable specialty. Uh, the defense was not very good last year. They were number 82 in PPA per drive, uh, number 68 in scoring opportunities. Again, that's drives inside the 40-yard line by the opponent. Number 75 in points per scoring opportunity, and then number 112 in explosive play rate allowed. Uh, they brought in six defensive transfers. Five of them, I think, are going to see quite a bit of playing time. Ten players do return with 300-plus snaps, but if the defense was not good and, you know, it doesn't really matter, 
if you've got guys coming back if the defense wasn't good. I think that there's plenty here for Venables to work with. This team is a projected favorite in all 12 games. Even with the coaching changeover, even with all the transfers, etc., they are still projected to win every single game. However, there are six toss-ups. As I said for the other two games or other two teams that I have already gone over, a toss-up to me is any game that is projected to be within one score. They're projected to win all of them. They're projected favorites in all of them, but six of them are going to be by eight points or less. That's that's a cause for concern here. So, uh, keys to the season, you know, you got to keep Gabriel healthy. Without like once he goes out, yeah, I don't know what you have behind him. I don't know that anybody does. Uh, offense will be explosive with him, Mims and Gray, uh, but you can't really afford injuries here. There's not a ton of depth as far as they are concerned. On defense, you got to gel the transfers with the returners very quickly. Hope the returning players improve quickly in a new scheme. Uh, again, really curious what Venables is going to be like as a coach. Um, I, I just, I'm really curious. Is he going to run the defense and let Levy run the offense? How How is that going to work? What's the dynamics going to be? They're, uh, they're plus 185 to win the conference, so they're the favorite there. Uh, their win total, though, is only 8.5, and, and it's juiced to the under at minus 120. So, you know, I, I don't know that people expect a lot out of the Big 12. I have them at 10-2. and two. Uh, I've got a loss to Nebraska. I've got a loss to Kansas State. But that's it. So, again... I could see them losing to Texas. I could see them losing to Baylor or Oklahoma State or whatever, right? There's plenty of different spots where they could lose on this schedule. I don't know who it's going to be to. I just have a feeling they'll go 10-2, and two, much like they did last season, and that's putting a lot of faith into Brent Venables. Uh, with only 57% returning production here, the offense returns very little, 46%. That's number 113 in the country. But I think that they're going to lean on defense, and we have seen – defense be a good stalwart in the Big 12 Conference over the past few years. So if you've got a really good defense, which I think Oklahoma can be under Venables, then I think you got a chance to do really, really well, and I think they got a chance to win the conference. So we'll see what, uh, what they end up being. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.